up here, right next to BJ's the Steakhouse, there's a location that I knew was there because I could see the invitation, you know, years ago when I did a dig behind what was Century 21 right here. And in behind this building in the one corner, I, I could see the indentation, the pock. So that's where we're going to be, you know, trying to play on this as a, as a look and see what we, we can come up with. My name is Robert E. Lee III. Uh, what I try to do and what I've done here for the last 13 years is a program of recovering history from beneath our feet. What I'm looking for are the old outhouse bits that belong to these homesteads and these uh, businesses throughout the area. I'm actually in a six county wide uh, circle as far as where I've done over 350 of these digs over the last 13 years. What I try to do is put together the pieces that come out of these digs that tell a story about these families, what their educational ba basis was, whether they were literate, uh, the type of ailments they may have been having to deal with as far as the type of medicines you might find in these digs. Uh, some of these food products and so on will also give a different idea as far as what their uh, capabilities were within the community, uh, whether they had money or not. Uh, not everybody was literate, so you don't necessarily always find an inkwell in some of these digs. We worked on three different digs in the last two days here in Danville. And we worked on one dig thanks to Mike Kuziak. He owns several properties throughout the town. And one of the locations was, again, behind his, his property right here off of Jacob's Alley. Inside the basement, in, in the floor of the basement, up against the back wall of the oldest part of the buildings in the basement, was this pit that we opened up. It ended up being probably a well. We were down 18 feet and we were sopping in water. So we knew that was probably, but the problem was it teased us along the way. It kept putting trinkets in our hands. I mean, this is all pre 1860s, 1850s. And that gives you a, a quite an excitement just knowing that that kind of age is in there. Oh my. Huh? But look, it's union glass I see that. and an arch. Right, I see How that. How often do you see that? Hey, Russell, and I know that's Iron Pond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do that yeah. just without even a question. Uh huh. On embossed slug plate. As we went down, every couple of feet, we come up with another piece. It just led us a little deeper. You had to keep going, or you're just never going to know. You have to finish these digs. In medicine, this is probably every bit of 1860s. Uh, plain bottle, but you can see the type of uh, you know case mold that it had. And uh, another piece that these guys left hanging there for me to find in the sidewall. Nobody even noticed it till I saw it. And that's my prowess. But we're done for the day. And that's all we can say. It was a tough dig, but the college tried. But then we did another dig that we didn't even finish till 9.30 last evening. <laughs> we were pretty tuckered. A friend of mine, Russell Snyder, and his, his buddy, Patrick, and uh, they, they come up here all the way from below Redding to help do these excavations because the one gentleman uh, has a, a rig that we could take the overburden off these and get down in quicker. It's the old iron stone. It was just a chore to come out of that surface. You see maybe some other pieces and stuff. And this is gonna be you know relative to across the gamut. It can be 1860 to 1890.
the top of the stone wall right in here, and this is kind of compromised. If this top burden was taken off, then it would be, you know, then you could cut this right down into here, take that out with it. Last night, as, as we were doing this dig over here on the other side of Main Street here in Danville, we had this dig, it was probably a good 10, 12 foot, anyhow, stone line pit. Oh, about three by four, give or take, as far as the dimensions. The one really important piece was a Daniel Ack. His work is so rare in this region that you can't even, you, you're lucky to, to be able to auction a piece and buy it because people will clamor for them. But to find a piece that has his tulip design on it, I've never seen really any of his work that has the cobalt blue tulips on it. So this is a really unique piece. Uh, and again, being a potter, this is reverence for me. <laughs> I mean, this was like gold. And as soon as the gentleman, uh, Russell Snyder, was actually in the pit at this time, when it, and all he said was, it's a Mooresburg piece. I just about fell over, because <laughs> I knew what it meant. And hence, you know, we, we tried to recover all of it that was there. There's a piece out of the back side of it that, that we just couldn't find. Uh, but we have all the front face and 90% of it. More than likely, the shape and style of this, of this bowl is considered a milk bowl. So again, you know, they, they have specific size, shapes, and styles that meant usage as far as the way they were using some of these potteries. This piece here is probably right around the 1870, 1880s range, just to give or take. I know he was in business a little earlier than that, but again, knowing where I have here, you know, it's hard to tell much else until I reference out what this, this tool, you know, when he was developing his decoration stuff. I don't know that specifically yet. What I, what I started, again, 13 years ago was to try and recover potteries, because I do reenactments with the potteries. So that was the original intention. Then it came to be that here is a, a world of stories coming at you. So then it became really what is the information telling me about that family tree that was there in that homestead at that particular time. It's so precious as far as the history that's buried just beneath our feet. It's not coming from anywhere else. It tells all the story of us as individuals and families. And again, it's, it's precious. And that's the way I try and keep it.